Hi, I'm Chris from Podcast Engineering School, and today I'm going to tell you about the CLA2A plugin from Waves. It's there you see it on the screen uh, in my Reaper DAW. This is a compressor limiter plugin, which is really good. It's modeled off analog hardware. So first I'm going to just go over the controls real quick. Then I'm going to read, show you some specs from the manual, and then I'm going to show you how it works and give you an audio example so you can hear how it works. And I'm even going to show you the waves and yeah, it'll, it'll be cool. So, so on the plugin itself, this is a really simple, uh, plugin again, built on hardware, which only had basically two knobs. The one on the left here is the gain. And the one on the right here is the peak reduction. Now it also has, you, it's, you can use it as a limiter as well. So it's a compressor or a limiter. Uh, you can actually turn on some analog noise if you want some analog noise. Um, you can actually roll off a little bit of high frequency in terms of uh, how the compressor reacts to the audio. And then of course you have the VU display. So let's, uh, let's look at a couple things in the manual. Well, here's the plugin on the Waves website. Um, yeah, wait, what, how much was it? 29 bucks, yeah, so this is not an expensive one. This is the uh, user guide. So let's look at here. So there's two main controls of compression. Uh, the compressor has a ratio of approximately three to one and the limiter has a ratio of approximately hundred to one, which is pretty cool. And then here's, a, here's everything that I showed you that's on the plugin itself. Then yeah, this high frequency knob, it actually, um, yeah, it, you can actually adjust the sensitivity of the compressor to lower frequencies and which results in less compression. So apparently the initial value is 50 out of 100. So it's right in the middle. So you could just leave it at 50 or you could try to mess with it. This is real, a real nuance um, parameter here. So, you, you, you know, you might just want to leave it where it is. It's fine. I usually just leave it at 50. Um, and then you have the analog. What I, like I said, you can add some uh, little analog characteristics there too. And what I wanted to show you here is that, oh yeah, the, uh, the reset value for the gain knob is uh, 32.28. What that means is if you want to, you, so what one of the things you can do with plugins is just run audio through them without actually processing the audio. So like we could use this compressor and not compress the audio, but just run audio through it. And you'll it like the plugin adds a little bit of a flavor or a vibe to the audio. And it, sometimes just that little flavor or vibe can actually help. So anyway, so if you put the gain at, what did we say? 32.28, uh, that would be just unity gain. The, the signal would go right through. So, all right, well, let's play some audio here. This is from one of my episodes of the podcast engineering show. And first I'm going to play you the audio without any compression. I already dialed in the compressor settings and you'll, we'll, we'll talk about it, but first without any compression, you could see the wave right here. Um, it gets really loud, right? There's a big peak there and you'll hear it. It's actually quite loud. It almost sort of jumps out at you. And then, and then I start mumbling and then I start low t speaking at a lower volume and it gets softer and softer. And so, yeah. So here's without any compression, right? Riverside, which by the way, you're also plugged in with an eighth inch mini plug right into. So yeah. And now let's hear that one more time without compression, right? Riverside, which by the way, you're also plugged in with an eighth inch mini plug, right? So that's obviously my voice and that's how some people talk. Like you get really energetic for a, for a very short time and then you sort of talk at a normal volume. And so let's listen to it with the compressor in. Now what the compressor is gonna do is it's gonna compress this peak down a bit. So it'll still sound like I got louder, but it won't be so, you know, it won't jump out so much and sort of uh, almost scare, not scare you, but, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> My God. Anyway, uh, so this is with jar you. Maybe that's it. Like it's jarring, right? But now this is with the compression. Uh, listen to this. And while you're listening to this, you can also look at the meter here. You could see how much gain reduction I'm, I dialed in, which is about 4 dB of gain reduction. So now this, 
on this plugin itself, three to four dB of gain reduction is pretty good. That that's I wouldn't say it's a lot, but it's a good amount. And if you tried to get more more um, compression, you it would start to sound awkward. So you kind of got to dial it in. So you're you're compressing it, but you're not compressing it too much because then it'll sound awkward and really weird. So this is with the compression. And again, you can watch the VU meter and listen uh, for how loud this peak is. Right, Riverside. Which, by the way, you're also plugged in with an eighth inch mini plug right into your... All right, I'll play it again with compression. Right, Riverside. Which, by the way, you're also plugged in with an eighth inch mini plug right into your... So yeah, you could see there's about 4 dB gain reduction, right? Right, Riverside. Which, by the way, you're also plugged in with an eighth... Yeah, and you can hear I get louder, but it's not so jarring. So that's good. So what I did is I rendered the the raw version and the compressed version, and I opened them. We're going to look at them in uh, Isotope RX. So this is the raw version. And just take a look up here on the top left, and you can see this peak is the, is the peak that re was really loud. And then if I change to the compressed file, you'll see that peak comes down quite a bit. So watch in this area, I'm gonna switch back and forth and you're gonna see how much how much we compress that peak right there. So this is the raw, this is the compressed. This is the raw, that's the compressed. Raw, compressed. And you can look over here too, as I switch back and forth, just look over here too. Uh, so this is raw, that's compressed. Raw, compressed, raw compressed. Now, you'll also notice that the the parts when I'm not speaking that loud, they're not really affected that much. They're they're pretty much the same level with or without compression. So, yeah, so I just I thought it would be helpful to show you guys this plugin. It's a really really good plugin. It's not even that expensive. Um and it's modeled off a great piece of hardware that I mean, this in real life, the hardware of this compressor was used on like a million different records. Like so many so many of the vocals you hear, you hear on the radio are going through this. Same with bass guitars and guitars and drums and stuff like that. So um, this was this is one of the all time greatest analog compressors. Uh, it's an optical compressor, by the way. That's that's the that's how it does the compression. Actually, uh, when the audio comes in in inside the hardware a little, the louder the audio, the brighter the light gets. And then if the, as the light gets too, as the light gets brighter, there's a sensor that actually applies the compression. So it's pretty cool. I think it, I think it came out in the sixties, I believe. So anyway, that is the, uh, oh, and I wanted to also mention that, um, universal audio also makes their version of the LA-2A, and they make a bunch of different versions, actually. So this is the gray, this is the legacy, and this is the silver. I believe the silver is the same as the waves because it looks the same. And then there's an LA-2, which I this might be the original. Uh, I don't even know, actually. But anyway, this is the waves one, and I think, I think we can uh, wrap up the video here. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, put them below. Let me know if you use this plugin, let me know how you like it and how you use it and all that stuff. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions about me or Podcast Engineering School, go to the website, podcastengineeringschool.com. And that's it. So let's end it here. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you.